Well, hey there, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering. But I also like to talk about Arduino. Hey, in this video, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about the power supply module that came with your Arduino kit. So uh, the plan is, by the end of this lecture, you should know everything you need to know to use the power supply module. Um, that And that it's the one that came in your Elegoo Super Starter Kit and with the proto board also came with the kit and the whole idea is this is going to prepare you for the next lecture on driving the brush DC motor so that's going to kind of tie these last several uh, lectures together alright so the big picture let's talk about that for a second I mean why would we even need this thing so the DC brush motor is driven by somewhere between 3 and 6 volts depending on the speed you want and uh, you'll notice there in the little little picture of it um, that comes with the uh, Elegoo kit, you'll notice it even describes it as fan blade and 3 to 6 volt motor. Um, and at any rate, so it just needs between 3 and 6. And you already know your Arduino can generate 5 volts. So the question is, well, why can't we just drive the motor from the Arduino board? And uh, the, the reason is this, heat. So the number one cause of electronic failure is heat. And the thing to know is, I mean, if you try it, if you hook it up, run it, you're like, yeah, works fine. Well, it's not a binary proposition. It's not like works doesn't work. Um, what it is is everything will run hotter. You'll be drawing more current than that thing's designed for, the power supply on it. And what happens is the hotter electronics run, the shorter the life is. So it may not fail catastrophically right then, but definitely you're sort of living on borrowed time. And um, anyway, bottom line is you can run the motor dry, the motor directly from the Arduino, but you will shorten its life. And that's why the Arduino kit comes with a power supply module. All right, so here's the module here. Here I'm holding it in my hand. Uh, kind of on the left, you see me holding the hand. On the right upper, you see kind of a picture from the top. And on the bottom, what you see is, you notice those pins. There's four sets of, four pairs of, of pins there. And um, this, is, this is the thing we're talking about. Now, um, the whole deal is this thing's designed so that it fits into the proto board. So on upper right here, you kind of see where I'm just um, just sort of aligning it in position. You see you need both sets of the both pairs of the pins on both sides to connect to the power and ground um, connectors. Now you can see that pretty clearly on the lower left. You see how oh yeah, those pins align with the plus and the minus on both sides of the proto board. And then on the lower right, you see it when it's all the way pushed in. There are little white spacers, so it won't be flush with the, with the proto board. But what you're doing is you're pushing it down so that it makes firm contact and so that those spacers are, um, you know, making contact with the proto board. Now, something you need to understand about this uh, power supply module is that the voltages it provides are selectable. So you can see on the upper right there, I've got, uh, you can kind of see the whole module. And then on the lower left and right, I zoom in to the lower left and right pieces. And what you see are those suitcase jumpers where the one on the left right now, you can see the jumpers are connecting the 5 volts to VCC, and if you move it, the one on the right is connecting 3.3 volts to VCC. And so, depending on where you put, how you configure those jumpers will depend whether it's putting 3.3 3 volt, 3 .3 volts or 5 volts onto the um, uh, proto board. Now, I already mentioned that I called them suitcase jumpers. Why is that? I don't know. There's probably some formal name, but everywhere I've worked, we've called them suitcase jumpers. And I think the name comes from um, you know, the little little shorting bar that connects the two pins. I mean, uh, you know, it kind of looks like the handle of on a, on a suitcase or something. At any rate, you see this picture here. I've got it on a penny, so you can kind of see the scale a little bit. So on each side of the board, you can configure that side of the board to be 5 volts, 3.3 volts, or no connect. So for 5 volts there, you see you kind of move it to the left. For 3.3, you move it over to the right. 
And uh, what you can do for no connect is just remove the jumper. Um, more commonly, what you'll see is people will just rotate it 90 degrees so it's connecting the one pin to nothing. And the reason for that is a very practical reason, which is um, you're less likely to lose the jumper, you know, because if you just take it off, you'll set it down, like, oh, where did I put that thing? Where if you just sort of rotate it where one end is on the pin and the other side of it's just floating in space, you don't lose the, you know, the, the, uh, the jumper. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm showing you my proto board. And what you'll see here is I'm setting up for I've got my seven segment display there in the background you can see the uh, 74HC595 shift register and then toward closest to the power module you see my little IR um, sensor and what you'll see is with all three of those devices they're taking power and ground from the power and ground that's on the bottom side of the proto board and what you see on the top row of the proto board you see there's no connects so what I've done here then is on the bottom one, I've set the jumper to be no connect. And the reason is because those devices are getting their ground and their power from Arduino. And on the top row, which is currently unused, you see that I hooked that one up to be five volts so that when I add in the next video, when I add the motor and the fan, what you'll see is we'll be taking power and ground for the motor from those power rails. All right, so um, in this this uh, screen here, then what I'm showing is, um, you know, you can drive this thing from a nine volt battery, and uh, what you do is you plug it in like you did before. And in this picture, notice what you see is you can see the little green LED on the power module, so that sort of confirms for you that. Yep, power supplied to the power module, but you'll notice the seventh segment display is off. You'll notice there's no LEDs on the Arduino, and that kind of confirms that, yeah, you've got it set up properly where this power, um, you know, the power module is not configured to sort of interfere with Arduino. Now, uh, what you can do, you can power the Arduino off of the power module. So if you look at the USB connector that's on the power supply module, you'll notice it's the opposite, it's the same kind of connector that's like on your PC. And so what you can do is use the same cable that you would normally hook one end to your PC and the other end to the Arduino. You can hook that to the power supply module just to get power. And what you see here is you know evidence of everything's working because the you know you see the little green light on the um, power modules on and you also see the two is on there on the seven segment display and you can also see a couple of the LEDs on the Arduino are powered on. Now one thing to know is there is an on off switch on the power supply module so I've got it there on the right uh, kind of shown from two views it's a toggle button you sort of push it you know and it kind of toggles on and off and uh, if you hook this up and nothing comes on you probably ought to consider like maybe the switch is off and the two pictures there on the left, I'm just showing that, okay, everything's the same. I just push the button, and on the top it's on. I push the button again, the power's off. So, yeah, you know, you got to put the on-off switch in the right position. And, uh, you know, there is kind of a, what I think is an obvious question that comes up is, well, why, you know, we know we can uh, power the Arduino from the power supply module via USB. Can't we just set the suitcase jumpers to provide 5 volts to the bus? that we're using for the rest of the stuff. And um, I guess I'm going to play the old leave that to a student as an exercise. Um, it might work, it might not. Uh, I haven't done the research and here, here's what it is. It, it might be that if you try it, it works. And it might be that you try it, it works, and then you get some smoke. And um, the whole question is to what degree have they deliberately tried to have some buffers and tried to avoid the situation where they don't want the voltage to go in the opposite direction. So the truth is I really don't know. I haven't done the research. I'm kind of pressed for time, so I'm not going to do it now. But uh, what I just showed you a moment ago of using the USB cable, I, I'm confident that will work fine. Yeah, if you try configuring the suitcase jumpers and not use the USB cable, it's, it's just not clear to me if that's going to work or not. At any rate. Proceed at your own risk. Okay, in summary, um, 
you can you know we use the power supply module to power the motor. Uh, very important. You've got to set those suitcase jumpers. You know you're going to want five volts for the motor. You're going to want no connect for the side that the Arduino is using. And then you know remember there's an on off switch. Ah, the stupid thing won't work. Well yeah you you know, might need to turn the switch on. Hey, any rate, thanks for listening. Um, if you like this video, there's more on TomArchConsulting.com. Um, I've got Lydia. Most of my videos are on uh, leading engineers. I'm, you know, teaching a class at Biola, obviously with you know the hat and the introductory slide. And so I'm making some classes on Arduino. At any rate, you can find all videos on all manner of things. And uh, if you don't mind giving me a like or subscribing, that'll help me. And um, and when you're on YouTube searching for me, you can search on just Dr. Tom Ulrich or I think Engineering Leadership Guy seems to work a bit. At any rate, thanks for listening and we'll talk to you later.